Welcome to the Cisco Netacad Introduction to Networks video series by Jason Johnson. This video covers Module 8, Part 1 of 2, and it's going to be covering the network layer. In Module 8, Part 1 of 2, we will be looking at network layer characteristics, and we'll explain how the network layer uses IP protocols for reliable communications. We will also look at the V4 packet, which explains the role of the major header fields in the IPv4 packet. And then the IPv6 packet, same things. We're going to be looking at the fields and the V6 packet. Network layer characteristics. So the network layer is layer three. So we've talked about the physical layer, the data link layer, and now we're going to be looking at the network layer. So the network layer is going to be providing routing. It provides services to allow end devices to exchange data. The IPv version four or V4 and IPv version six, or I'll call it as V6, are the principal network layer communication protocols at this layer. The network layer performs four basic operations, addressing end devices, encapsulation, routing, and de-encapsulation. And we can look over here at the image here. So we see that on the OSI model there, it's on the third layer. And the layer three will do the encapsulation on its segment. It sends it on down to the medium, sends it across, and then comes back up and de-encapsulates it there at the layer three on that end. IP encapsulates the transport layer segment. IP can either use V4 or V6 and not impact the layer four segment. So the IP packet will be examined by all layer three devices as it moves along the network. The IP addressing does not change source from source to destination. So the transport layer encapsulation, you have the segment header, the data, it goes down and the layer three will then encapsulate that layer. A few of the characteristics of IP or internet protocol, it's meant to have low overhead and may be described as connectionless, best effort, and media independent. What we mean by IP is connectionless is that IP does not establish a connection with the des destination before sending the packet. It just sends them. There's no control information needed. There's no synchronization, no acknowledgements, no back and forth. The package just gets sent. The destination will receive the packet when it arrives, but no pre-notifications are sent by the IP. If there is a need for connection-oriented traffic, then another protocol will handle this, typically TCP at the transport layer. IP is best effort. IP will not guarantee delivery of the packet. It just don't care. It just sends it. It don't care if it gets there or not. IP has reduced overhead since there's no mechanism to resend data that's not received. IP does not expect acknowledgements back. And IP does not know if the other device is operational or if it's received the packet. Again, it just sends it, forgets it, and it don't care. So the IP packets get sent, they get routed best effort, and they get there or they don't. The other end sees them or they don't. And some packets can be lost in route, and it doesn't matter. IP is unreliable. Of course, we just discussed that IP is best effort and connectionless, so it's unreliable that it cannot manage or fix undelivered or corrupted packets. It cannot transmit after, retransmit after an error. IP cannot realign out of sequence packets, and IP must rely on other protocols for those functions. Now, IP is media independent. It does not concern itself with the type of frame required at the data link layer, or the media type at the physical layer. IP can be sent over any media type, copper, fiber, wireless, any of them. Now the network layer will establish the maximum transmission unit or the MTU. You'll see it, you'll hear it um, shortened to MTU. The network layer receives this from the control information sent by the data link layer. The network then establishes the MTU size. Fragmentation is when layer three splits the V4 packet into smaller units. So fragmenting causes latency. V6 does not fragment packets. An example is a router goes from ethernet to a slow WAN with a smaller MTU. And so it will fragment a V4, but it will not do that with V6. Let's take a look at the V4 packet. V4 is the primary communication protocol for the network layer. The network header has many purposes. It ensures the packet is sent in the correct direction to the destination. It contains information for network layer processing in various fields. And the information in the header is used by all layer three devices that handle the packet. The V4 network header characteristics, it is in binary. 
It contains several fields of information. The diagram that we're looking at here is read from left to right, four bytes per line. And the two most important fields are the source and destination. So you have your version, um, your total length, um, your flags, your fra fragment offset, your time to live, your protocols, your headers, checksum, and your source and IP address, or your source and destination IP address. And protocols may have one or more functions in there. Now, significant fields in the V4 header, uh, the version, there will be a V4 as opposed to a V6 for IPv6. Um, a 4-bit field is 0100. Differentiated services, so that's used for quality of service, or diff serve, DS field, or other in-serve, TOS, or type of service. Detect corruption in the V4 header, that's the header checksum. The time to live, the layer 3 hop count, that's how many hops it's made. When it becomes zero, the router will discard the packet. That is put in place to keep make sure that packets don't just bounce around the internet forever. So there's a time to live on a packet, and it will go, and once it gets to its uh, hop limit, uh, or it's time to live, it will just die. Um, it'll get discarded at the next router. The protocol, ID's next level protocol, ICMP, TCP, UDP. It's a 32-bit source address and a 32-bit destination address. V6 packets. V4 has some major limitations to it. Its addresses are depleted. We ran out of them a long time ago, so we have to do something different. So there's a lack of end-to-end -end connectivity with V4. So to make sure V4 survived this long, private addressing and network address translation, or NAT, was created. That ended direct communications with public addressing because you are translating IP addressing at the router with network address translation. Translation. Increased network complexity. NAT was meant as a temporary solution, and it creates issues on a network as a side effect of manipulating the network headers addressing, and NAT causes latency and troubleshooting issues. So let's look at a V6 overview here. V6 was developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force, or ITETF. It overcomes the limitations of V4. It provides increased address space. It's based on a 128-bit address, not 32 bits. It improved or simplified the header with fewer fields, and it eliminated the need for NAT. Since there's a huge amount of addressing, I mean, we'll take a look here in just a second. There's a lot. There's no need for private addressing internally, and it can be mapped to a shared public address. And let's take a look at what size we're looking at here. Just to wrap your head around the size of V6 addressing, 1 billion is 10 to the ninth power, and that's what 10, 1 billion looks like. It is one undecillion. That's how many V6 addresses you can have or that are available. 10 to the 36th power. It's a big number. I've heard it compared a lot of different ways. Grains of sand on the planet. I mean, there, it's, it's just a very large number. The IPv4 packet header fields in the V6 packet header. The V6 header is simplified but not smaller. The header is fixed at 40 bytes or octets long. Several V4 fields were removed to improve performance, and V4 fields were removed to improve performance, and those that were removed are the flag, the fragment offset, and the header checksum. Significant fields in the V6 header. The version, there will be a 6 as opposed to a 4. The traffic class is used for QoS. The flow label informs, devi informs devices to handle identical flow labels the same way, 20-bit field. The payload length, the 16-bit field indicates the length of the data portion or payload of the V6 packet. The next header, ID's next level protocol, ICMP, TCP, UDP. The hop limit, that replaces the time to live field. And the source V6 address, it's 128-bit source address. And the destination V6 address, it's 128-bit destination address. The V6 packet may contain extension headers. Um, you can provide optional network layer information. They're placed between the V6 header and the payload, and they may be used for fragmentation, security, mobility, and support. Unlike V4, routers do not fragment V6 packets, though. All right, this has been Module 8, Part 1 of 2. The next video, Module 8, Part 2 of 2, you should be able to find the link below in the description. And I hope this information was helpful for you, and have a great day.